What's up, y'all? This is Nikki G from Better Commander. We're going to do a Virtue and Valor pre-con breakdown today, brother. Get ready. Oh, man, it's getting spicy in here today. Selesnia Enchantments and Auras. This deck is pre-selling for 35 bucks, and honestly, I think it's an absolute steal, dude. It's just a solid deck. The Commander's Diesel, very powerful, has the potential to take out opponents on turn 5 or so. Let's take a look at the new commanders in the box and discuss their relative merits. And I'm going to discuss some of the new cards, we're going to talk about some notable reprints, and then make some simple suggestions for reasonable upgrades. Listen, this one is very simple, dude, so this is going to be a fun short showcase of the pre-con. But you gotta like the video, you gotta subscribe, brother, how the heck are you going to get the notifications? Telepathy? You think I'm going to have to beam this thing into your mind directly, dude? I don't have time for that, brother. Just hit the bell. Look at this guy out here, Elevir of the Wild Court. Two green and a white for a legendary creature, Human Knight, it's a 4-4. Whenever this guy enters the battlefield or attacks, create a virtuous roll token attached to another target creature you control. So, blah blah blah, enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each enchantment you control. So whenever an enchanted player you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Very powerful. This guy wants to suit up with auras and bang in there, dude. Look at that art though, man. This guy is a clutch of little guys he's chilling out in the woods with, man. That's my dream retirement plan right there. Some gnomes and some rabbits, some sloths maybe. Then we got Gil Wayne out there. He's a casting director, man. I think he's on strike with SAG after right now. One green and a white for a legendary creature, human bard, it's a 2-3. Whenever this guy or another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can choose one. You can give him a royal roll token, you give him a sorcerer roll token, create a monster roll token, or dude, you can just make a little jelly roll. Look at this guy, flapping his hats around, man. This guy and Elevir are hanging in the woods. They're dressing up all the sloths and the dang rabbits like it's some kind of silly game, dude. If you went and put a hat on a person who didn't want that hat, that's assault, buddy. That might be animal abuse. So all the rolls give plus one, plus one. The Sorcerer Roll lets you scry one on attack. Monster Roll gives Trample, which is nice. And the Royal Roll gives Ward one. So in concert with the Commander, this provides both evasion and protection. But only one at a time, dude. The real strength on this guy is just that he's plopping auras all over the place. So we can pump with auras and creatures that care about that. Now these roll tokens, dude, just a note about these. Your creature's only going to have one of these at a time. If you have one already attached to a creature, you throw it in the graveyard if you make another one. The virtuous roll is a pretty decent pump, dude. This guy sorely needs evasion and trample, the commander, because he's going to get big, dude. He's also going to eat removal, though, so you may want to beef up the auras in the box with protection auras. Poor Elevir is going to eat removal, brother, let me tell you. So let's take a look at some of the new cards in the deck. Are they worth a dang? Let's see here, dude. We got the knickknack oof. X and a green for a creature oof, it's a 1-1. One, one. Enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And when it enters the battlefield, reveal the top X cards of your library. You can put any number or cards with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Then put all the cards revealed this way that weren't put on the battlefield on the bottom of the library. This is very good in this deck. This deck out of the box has 21 auras and it needs a little more to make this worth it. You want to beef up that aura count. That's the kind of upgrade comp opportunity for this pre-con. Needs more auras, dude, but if you pack in about 25 to 30, you got a nice 5 or 6 drop. That's slapping out auras. I like this guy. Then we got Liberated Livestock, dude. Brand new card in this pre-con. 5 and a white for a creature, cat, bird, ox. When this thing dies, you're going to create a bunch of tokens. I'm not going to read it. Dude, you can read the card, all right? And then you can put an aura card from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield attached to it. I like that recursion. I like the art on this thing, but I don't know. It's not that great. Listen, man, if there's a cow chilling with a cat, I'm in, dude, but this is clunky. Costs a lot. I think it's a bulk card, honestly. I think it may be an easy cut. Would you rather have this or open the vaults for six mana? Or maybe just some Umbra out there? Listen, I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think it's gotta go. And fresh out of Elden Ring, we got the Timber Paladin. One in a green for an artifact creature knight, it's a 1-1. One, one. As long as this guy is enchanted by one aura, it has base power and toughness 3-3, three, three, and then it gets bigger and bigger as you go along, the more and more auras you put on it. Until finally, it's a 10-10 ten, ten Vigilance with Trample, as long as it has three or more auras. Is this a good card? Well, in this deck where you're kind of relying on the roll tokens, you have a good head start, but it can only have one roll token at a time. So you're concentrating auras on it. It's kind of like your threat. For two mana, it's a potential threat. And the more potential threats you have in this deck, the better, brother. I like this guy. I think he's just like an angry tree. Of course, at this point, you have the Lone Crafter Fawn. Two and a green for a Satyr Druid. When this guy enters the battlefield, you may discard one or more lands. When you do, return up to that many target non-land permanents from your graveyard to your hand. This is kind of a cool way to get rid of excess lands. There's 39 lands in the base deck, but you need stuff in your graveyard. This is also kind of a bit fiddly, dude. I mean, there's a bunch of three drops that tutor up auras like Heliot's Pilgrim and Moonblast Killer. You can just get those 
you know, right into your hand or right on the top of your library. Or just add Sithis or something. I can get rid of this thing. Songbird's Blessing. Very interesting card. Three and a white for an enchantment or an enchant creature. When an enchanted creature attacks, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an aura card. You put it right onto the battlefield, dude. If you don't, put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This is a little pricey at four mana, but you're getting your card on attack, which is what we want to be doing, and you're putting it directly onto the battlefield. And that's pretty good. Unfinished business, dude. This was a Chuck Norris movie back in the 80s. Three white white for a sorcery. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Then return up to two target aura and or equipment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to that creature. Five mana, I mean, listen, that's a bit pricey for a reanimation spell, but this can be a decent blowout after a board wipe, dude. You're getting your threat back and your two auras or equipment. This looks pretty good for equipment decks. Fantastic card in this deck. You're going to get wiped. You're going to get targeted. Your auras are going to go to the graveyard. All these removal spells are two or three for one if your threat is wearing auras. This is a three for one recursion, brother. Now we're cooking with some reprints, dude. This deck hit some really good notes. Right off the bat, yay. Hall of Heliod's Generosity, Legendary Land. Tap to add colorless, one and a white. Tap, put target enchantment card from your graveyard on top of your library. This is a great free roll land that gets back your auras. Fantastic reprint, dude. This was like 12 bucks. Sanctum Weaver, one and a green for an enchantment creature. Dryad, it's a zero two. Has tap, add X mana of any one color where X is the number of enchantments you control. This is just a solid reprint, man. It wears roll tokens if you need it, and it doesn't care if your auras are tokens. Topia Sprawl, I mean, this is great ramp. It's one mana ramp, dude. Enchantment Aura, Enchants of Forest. As it enters the battlefield, choose a color. Whenever Enchanted Forest is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional one mana of the chosen color. Another solid reprint. Would you believe this was an expensive card at one point, dude? Currently about a buck or so. Love this guy. Kenrith's Transformation, dude, this guy's just transforming into an elk, man. One in a green for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted creature's gonna lose all of his abilities and he's just gonna become a stupid elk, dude. Another solid, although less romantic, reprint. Make your boss into an elk and draw a card. Satessin Champion, two and a green for a creature, human warrior, it's a one three. Has this crazy constellation, dude. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on it and draw a card. That's the muscle mama, dude. She's getting big, brother. This does a lot in an aura deck. This was a $5 card. It got reprinted in Commander Masters pre-con and is now here. Down to a couple bucks, still a solid reprint. I mean, listen, if you bought that enchantment deck to get these expensive reprints, I mean, you're screwed, brother. But this thing's going to be real cheap due to a second reprint only a few weeks later. Now, this lady looks like she may have smoked too many cigarettes. It's the Smoky Grandma Umbra Mystic. Two and a white for a creature. Human Wizard, it's a 2-2. Forest attached to permanents you control have totem armor. Doesn't matter if it's a token, dude. If it's a stupid little roll token, it's got totem armor, dude. And that's because this is an old smoky grandma, right? She's doing vape tricks down at the shop, brother. This is a very solid reprint. This makes your roll tokens more potent, and the smoky grandma is here to take names. I love this card, man. Eidolon and Blossoms is two green green for an enchantment creature spirit. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever Eidolon and Blossoms or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This thing and Satessin Champion only care when enchantments enter the battlefield. You don't have to cast them, so your roll tokens are going to trigger it. And if you're cheating any auras in with any other stuff, it's going to trigger it too, that Songbirds card. These are two key cards in an aura and enchantment deck, and two rapid fire reprints are going to knock these down to bulk price, dude. I love Shalai, dude. When you look at the art, if you look up close, it looks like she smelled a fart up in the sky, man. That's where all the farts go when you release them. Three and white for a legendary creature, Angel. It's a three four with flying. You, Planeswalkers, you control, and other creatures you control have Hexproof. It also has this four green green, put a plus one plus one on each creature you control. This is an amazing reprint. It's a fantastic card. You want a couple threats to wear auras, dude, and this is a flying threat and a protection piece. Then we have some really sweet auras that get reprints. Bear Umbra and Angelic Destiny. These are going to make appearances and really should top out your curve as far as your auras go, dude. Four or five is pretty much where you should be. And finally, we have Retether. This is some much needed recursion. It was about six to seven dollars prior to this reprint. You're gonna need this card, dude. And I mentioned Open the Vaults. Heck, you may wanna consider Brilliant Restoration as well because you're, you'll have a guy with four auras and he's gonna get murked, brother. And those auras are all gonna go to the graveyard. All right, so what are some reasonable upgrades? Well, man, this is kind of a tough deck to upgrade. There are some really good creatures here, but Sithis really needs to be in here, brother. It's cheap, it's efficient, and this deck leans on enchantment creatures as well as auras, and Sithis is that too. And she's gonna trigger off of those, so draw cards, buddy. Trust me, drawing cards is good. 
Honestly, including Sithis, I would add about four or five of these things. In a similar vein, we have Seder Enchanter, we have Sram. Sram's out there doing his thing, and the newly reprinted Mesa Enchantress. This was also in Commander Masters. So smoothing out your draws is a fantastic way to power up this precon right off the bat. And you may want to add a few threats, and cheap little creatures like Light Paws fit that bill. This guy can capitalize on whatever auras you're casting. Go get another aura. Cheat it in, brother. That's card advantage, and that's toolbox access. I also recommend cutting a few creatures and slapping in some impactful auras. All that glitters is a great card and a very weird omission. While we're on the topic of cards that pump based on the number of enchantments, Helm of the Gods is a cheap one drop that won't get popped when your creature gets killed like an aura dude. It's not an enchantment though, it doesn't add to your enchantment count, but it can be great in this deck. Gift of Immortality is a great card, it's like three bucks. If it gets exiled, you're gonna be up a creek dude, but if it would die, it comes back. I kinda like that. Pentarch Ward and Unquestioned Authority can get us protection and our nice little cantrips as well. These are great in aura decks for a little protection. And that's it, man. Cut two lands and you're golden, dude. Deck hums like a refrigerator. I'm going to link my little upgrade, dude. It was very cheap. I don't even know if it was probably like 10 bucks total. This archetype is relatively easy to upgrade because auras isn't particularly sexy or powerful. But Elevator can sit at mid-powered tables. No problem, dude, with just a little upgrades. That's my deck, my dudes. Check it out. It's powerful. It's fun. Draws cards. It has powerful auras. And upgraded is pretty resilient. But is it fun, dude? Yep. It's fun, and it's 35 bucks for the whole dang commander deck that can be upgraded with bulk. I love it, man. Sneaky G from Better Commander, signing off.